There's been a lot of developers that um, people have looked at Elden Ring and this is what they've seen. They've seen a game that is good and there's no microtransactions. There's no overt one-dimensional political messaging. It's just a good game. And it was released in a finished state. So um, there were a lot of things that really, really made people upset about that. There were some developers because they knew that whenever people were talking about that, they were thinking to themselves, well, you know, they're making fun of me and my shitty video games. And so developers got their feelings hurt, I'm assuming, and we're gonna see that right now. So there's been a lot of buzz about Elden Ring on social media lately, not only because the game was just so successful and so many people are sharing yeah. their experiences about some of the crazy things that can happen in the game, but there are aspects of the conversation that unfortunately have turned sour after certain developers decided to take to Twitter to lambast the fact that the game was so critically successful because it had certain issues with aspects of the game's UX, its stability and performance, and its quest design. And All right, well, let me read this here. The quest design is bad, uh, PC graphics, stability and performance, apparently. Yeah, I mean, like, no, that that's fair. Like, I, I, I think, you know, Rebecca here is right. Like, absolutely. Like, Rebecca is 100% right. The the graphics are fine, but stability and performance on release was bad. Like, we can all agree, anybody who played it on PC knows that there was slowdowns. It was bad. Like, and it, it could be better, and I think that they fixed it, right? And the thing is, like, the reason they wouldn't have had to fix it if it wasn't bad, right? So it makes sense. The UI is awful, too? No, it's not. It's completely fine. Uh, I think that a lot of these people are um, re really, like... These are the kinds of people that I would pay real legitimate money to watch them play a video game. I, I would pay a lot of money to just watch them play Elden Ring and see what they do. See how they experience it. See what it's like. It's stability and performance and it's quest design. And there are criticisms here that are UI's fair. From, uh, UI's you know, the game UX fun. isn't perfect. There are things about it that I'd like to see improved. And UX stands for user experience, by the way. User interfaces, UI, that's kind of the visual representation. Everything about Elden Ring's user experience has been ideal. And it's been perfect, except for the fact that I think that players feel like they have to fight Margit too early. And they go up against Margit and they probably hit a wall and they frustrate themselves. Like, that is the only thing that I would say is like bad from user experience and it's not even bad for user experience it's bad for user lack of experience because a lot of those people don't know the context of souls games they don't know that's not user experience yes it is i think it is user experience i think that the way that you like you you obviously want to nudge the players in certain directions that's not what it is. It's game design. Let me see what it is. Let me, let me see for myself. And that way, uh, what is UX in game design? Yeah, I, I'm actually curious about this because some people are saying that's not true. And I feel like this is the user experience. Let me just go ahead and pull it up right now and see for myself. Helping game devs develop, develop better gameplay experiences for their players by leveraging psychology and human sciences. So this is obviously something about encouraging players to play the game in a certain way because you're talking about psychology and human science. And uh, user uh, diversity of phrases. Uh, what does it do? Who is it for? Um, user experience, particular discipline of design centered around the psychology of the end user. So, uh, and their behaviors, thinking processes, and capabilities. So what, what you're saying here what, what this is saying is that the UX is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like explicitly. UX is not UI. So I'm right and let's move on. Tation of the UX, if that makes sense. UX yeah. being just the kind of the intuitiveness of how yes. features of the game work, if that makes sense. Uh, stability and performance, that's definitely a major issue. That's the biggest blemish this game has that I hope from software True. resolve soon. True. PC graphics, I don't get the complaint. Uh, if referring to fidelity specifically, the game still looks gorgeous. Art style trumps graphics every time, in my opinion. Now, if From software games have never been good graphics. They have never been, if you zoom in on a lot of the character models in From Software games, they look like they were made out of um, watercolor. Uh, they look like that. That's how, how like just blurry and shitty they are. They look like shit. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares because that's not why people play the game. It looks good enough. 
and that's good enough. Rank to PC graphics settings, and yeah, on that front, there are certain things lacking, like ultra wide support, and you know, unlocking the frame rate and stuff like that, which is fair. Quest but design like for gameplay, me, not presentation. The way Elden Ring does it. Well, that, you're so right about that, and, and like that's another fucking thing is that like now in these video games, you have like these fucking stupid developers and these production studios to think that it matters whenever you hire a person and have them put on a tracking suit so they can have the most realistic role animation the game has. Nobody gives a fuck about that and you're wasting your money. Like, nobody cares about this. Like, this doesn't matter. Like, uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Like, do you think that, like, oh, wow, Nintendo had to figure out, okay, so, um, we're, we've got a real-life Goomba. Um, we cooked one up in the lab and we're gonna get this Italian guy uh, his his name is actually Luigi, but he's gonna be Mario, and I want you to jump on him, and we're gonna track it in a slow motion camera to make sure that our that our Goomba pops are actually accurate realistically. No, nobody cares. It doesn't matter. And you know what it really is? It's pearls before swine. You put all of this effort and all of this in. You put all of this into it, and the players just don't appreciate it. They just don't appreciate it. It's not that this is not something cool. It's that this does not improve the user experience. It's kind of like, how many streamers do you see that have really great cameras and setups and everything? Like, all of their, their production is amazing, and they just sit there mumbling along with a Top 40 song while they're playing Minecraft and nobody's watching them. That is the exact fucking same thing. Worse, it's just different and may not be for everyone, but doesn't make it objectively worse. So this one I don't quite agree with. It's stupid. But criticisms are one thing, but it's just more the expression of, like, the fact that Elden Ring scored a 97 Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming poop about these flaws that we notice. My life is a lie, and the fact that Well, these of course your life is a lie, because you learned about your life through somebody who is teaching game design at a school, and in many cases, if this is anything like business school, the reason why they're teaching is because they can't make their own fucking business. My, my fucking school had this, whenever I was in computer, uh, fucking computer repair, is that they could never hold down a teacher because any fucking teacher that could work in this, in, in the school making $40,000 a year could work in the private sector for $140,000 a year. So you have the bottom of the barrel people teaching people bottom of the barrel mentalities. That's what it is. So if it, if game, I don't know how game design school is, right? I know, like, for example, Rich went to game design school. He actually had teacher Bennett Foddy, right? And, like, I had teachers in business school that really did know what they were talking about, 100%. So there's a little bit of both. But there's a lot of them out there that just are fucking clueless. And, and these people are just people that they know a lot about, uh, you know, numbers or anything like that. Uh, or, like, the, the, the curriculum. Well, you're not teaching people about the curriculum. The curriculum. Who gives a shit about the fucking curriculum? It's about the application. This, this person's thinking about the curriculum. Nobody cares. Do you know how you graduate business school? You quit and you start your own business. Uh, people don't even see it that way. That's what I've always thought. Developers are almost like agreeing that Elden Ring doesn't deserve to be as critically successful as it is because there are certain issues that they have with aspects of the game. Just... I feel like ignores not only the... I would pay $1,000 to watch that person's first 10 hours of the game. I would pay $1,000, $10,000 to watch that. I would donate $10,000 to charity. I would not give the money to them. Oh, I would donate $10,000 to charity. I want to watch that person's first 10 hours of the game. Yeah, let, let's, let's see it. Tality of the experience of Elden Ring, which has enough pros to outshine the cons, but... Also, it feels like they're being salty. It feels like they're being they're, petty. They are being like salty. Trying to throw they Elden Ring petty. under True. the bus. And to me, the intent does feel mean-spirited, especially if you look at this screenshot of another tweet by the same developer who said, Elden Ring's Imagine getting taken to task by a furry. I mean, this guy just got oo-wooed into the dirt. Like, you, you get taken to task by a furry, man. That's sad. Holy shit, that's fucking sad. They can't understand why their effort is not being met with the same praises? Well, that's because they're delusional. Like, whenever I have a stream and the stream is bad, and then I go back and I watch it and it's bad, and it's like, it doesn't matter really. Like, if you don't understand why Elden Ring is receiving praise and certain other games are not receiving praise, you shouldn't be working on games. Because you don't understand user psychology. You don't, you don't understand your end user.
Like, that's really what it is. And if you go back and you look at every every person who has been like a massive innovator in whatever industry they were in, every single one of those fucking people, the reason what they were so innovative, the reason that they were so successful is the fact that they were able to see into the mind of a person and give the person what they want and also what they need. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Henry Ford, Steve Jobs, uh, fucking, uh, let's see, like Mark Zuckerberg. I do think Facebook is innovative. I thought it was incredible. Um, you know, if you look at all of these people, uh, Sam Walton, like all of these guys that are just massive, you know, business legends, every single one of them understood the end user experience and they understood their customer. The, the fact is, if you don't understand your customer, you will fail. That's all there is to it. You will fucking fail. And at the end of the day, Miyazaki and From Software understands the customer. Um, Square Enix understands the customer. The people that uh, run Valheim understand the customer. The people that run Lost Ark, uh, you know, it's a pay to win game. They understand their customer so well that their customers are spending their own money taking out uh, billboards to tell them how great they're doing. They understand them. And Blizzard used to understand their customers so fucking well that they went and they had a massive trade show, a trade show advertising their new products that thousands of people from all around the world would pay thousands of dollars to travel to just to celebrate how much they love those products. Think about that. Square doesn't, Yoshi P does? True. Uh, yeah, I, I know Square, Square Enix has like its own problems and there's been a lot of releases they've had that are bad. Even people didn't like Final Fantasy 15, etc. Right. And you're always going to have like good apples and bad apples. But you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. When you say it like that, Blizzard sounds like a culty MLM. Yeah, and it was. And we were proud to be part of the cult. You're goddamn right. Yep. It was great. It is so bad that I can only imagine FromSoft staff smoking at their desks and using CRT monitors. This isn't criticism. This is just straight up mean spirited attack against the actual. The user experience is so bad. I can only imagine from so does smoke uh, smoking at their desks and using CRT monitors. What does this mean? What's wrong with the CRT monitor? Huh? Well, you think you're too good to play CS:GO one point? Or sorry, CS one point six. You think you're too good to play Unreal Tournament? Huh? You're not. You're not good enough. Like, to me, the saltiness of these tweets are pretty apparent. And the end result yeah. is that this has all led to a whole lot of backlash. And people have been pointing out things like how... You see, like, you know what all this is, right? It's just some fucking guy that couldn't figure something else out in the game. And he's pissed off and he's blaming the game because he's stupid. That's all it is. This is a Ubisoft developer and this is a Guerrilla developer, both of who have released open world games, who kind of follow the same formulaic that open myself. world style that has become a bit too commonplace, well, a bit too stagnant. I've made an ass myself before. Though I do think uh, Horizon Forbidden West actually takes that formula and does it right and does it really well, but it could still feel somewhat formulaic here and there, in my opinion. And so coming from them saying that you know, Elden Ring doesn't deserve its sure big furry. score or that reviewers don't seem to care about uh, certain flaws, ignoring what Elden Ring does accomplish from an open world. You know, uh, was it Ferrari who said that uh, I don't give a fuck if my door is shut right or not? Whenever I hit the gas, I want the dude to shit his pants. I think it might have been Ferrari. It could have been somebody else. And you know what? We remember that. Because those are some good fucking cars. Nobody gives a fuck about, oh, the game slows down at this one point. They don't care about that. Yeah, that doesn't matter at all. Shelby said it? No, no, it wasn't Shelby. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Let me see if I can find the, the quote. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, this actually is really not a very good uh, bit of evidence. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really not a very good bit of evidence because it's literally just a, a Reddit post. This is what the actual quote is. It's from uh, Enzo Ferrari. I was right again. So this is actually the second time that I've been right and chat's been wrong just in one stream today. That's crazy. I don't care if the door gaps are straight. When the driver steps on the gas, so I'm to shit his pants. That's the quote. Look it up. Look it up. Design standpoint and not being able to at least give it credit 
before criticizing the things that you know can be criticized that's where a lot of Sources. people took issue it's more source about source the attitude point? of the criticism yeah, rather uh, than the criticism collaborating evidence itself for that? and that has instigated source? tweets like this I founded the Elden Ring with the good UX which has yeah. gotten over 80,000 <laughs> likes and what sucks about the approach of criticism here is that these few developers who don't necessarily represent the companies or studios as a whole have caused backlash against the studios as a whole I don't believe all of Guerrilla thinks this way it's just one guerrilla developer who said this i don't think all of ubisoft's developers think this way it's just this well, one guy not. who had this take to share and of what course this not the other ones are playing the game the flaming of tribalism and now people are suddenly attacking studios and saying no oh, this game's better and that game's better and you know elden ring deserves this and screw horizon forbidden west when you know i feel like both games can coexist and the conversation mm -hmm. doesn't have to turn into this like war between elden ring community and horizon one guy community or, you know, elden ring. okay guys all right guys all right look there's one or two guys who are saying that i was wrong nobody else was saying it you were disagreeing with me and saying like true right it wasn't really me beating chat half of you guys are just watching the video you've got nothing to do you have no horse in this race you just want to watch the video and have me stop pausing it every three seconds to get in another argument with the viewers okay i get it i'm sorry can we fucking move on all right let's go ring enthusiasts versus horizon enthusiasts like both games can coexist. They have both their own takes on open world design. I don't think that the more formulaic open world design has to go away entirely. I think multiple kinds of open world formats can exist. It's just refreshing what Elden Ring does because all open world games have become lately is some sort of that Ubisoft formula. And yeah. that's kind of the main thing that I drive. But I'm ultimately glad that Horizon Forbidden West resonated with tons of people and I've met people both who prefer Elden Ring or who prefer Horizon Forbidden West but still respect them. Most gamers don't care about who makes the game. They just want to play a good game. And it doesn't matter if it's made by Blizzard, Ubisoft, From Software, or whatever. They just see good game, I play good game. That's it. Appreciate the other, mm -hmm. but the conversation has turned into people flaming studios and the other game because yeah. of how these developers approach the criticism that has caused this conversation to heat up a bit too much. Now, on the other side of things, you've got a Ubisoft, a former Ubisoft developer who's spoken out about the way these developers approach their criticism and who agreed with audiences saying that AAA open world games have become a bit too formulaic and a bit too stale. And I'd like to read this take, which is different from these developers okay. and uh, kind of, I think, represents the other side of things. Here's what he had to say. Let it be heard, let it be noted that I lament greatly and with satisfaction that the Ubisoft formula that is permeated into all major AAA open world games is tired and wrote from quest design to UX, everything about it, and I do agree with this. Even Horizon Let me read what he West said to a degree. Give me a second. Gave uh, I'm going to just zoom back. Uh, Tired and run from quest design, the user interface, everything about it. I hate that every major AAA open world has the same quest design, has the same checkpointing, the same waypointing, all the same bells and whistles, and I wish it would stop. Uh, I'm thankful for a game like Breath of the Wild, which is doing a good job breaking that mold, even though it has its hands in the Ubisoft formula. The thing is, like, I mean, I never really played any of these games. Like, so I can't really speak to a lot of, like, are these games innovative or not? Like, uh, whatever the Ubisoft game is. So I'm not really sure. Is, is this accurate? Yeah, is, is this part accurate? Yeah. Tired and wrote from quest design to UX, everything about it, and I do agree with this. Even mm -hmm. Horizon Forbidden West, to a degree, gave me that sense, even though the game did a good version of this formula where it wasn't stuffed to the brim with very grindy and very generic feeling activities and quests. Yeah. It didn't feel like the game overstayed its welcome. The graphics were beautiful and it had all these great things going for it, but it still followed that formula, whereas Elden Ring, for me, felt like it just did something really that felt refreshing. This former Ubisoft developer continued, I just hate that every major AAA open world game has the same quest design. Has yeah. I haven't played these, so like this, the is, this is new for all me. All the same bells and whistles. And this really goes to show that not all developers necessarily feel that the Ubisoft formula or the traditional open world formula that that's all open world games has become. See, I actually don't think players care about that. I think the reason why players d like a game like Elden Ring is because it doesn't have any other uh, pay to win or pay for convenience or microtransaction bells and whistles. And there's no implementation of the viewpoints of the real world developers being injected into the game in an uh, overt way. 
Like, I, I think those are the two big reasons why people actually like Elden Ring. The user experience, the menus, the world building, the graphics, etc. I, I think, yeah, sure. Like, because the reason why they're using the formula, people say in chat, is probably because it works. Like, that's a big reason. Uh, of course, that's a reason why. It's because it works for a lot of people, and people like that. Uh, however... I think there's also a lot of people that are just tired of seeing the same old shit over and over, and that's why they're happy to see something new. Um, is strictly the way to go. There are developers mm -hmm. out there who are seeking to drive more ambitious risks and ambitious designs that kind of break away from the mold that so many games have stuck with so that refreshing and compelling experiences like Elden Ring can kind of rise to the top. But of course, ground floor developers don't get to necessarily define the direction of the game. That's no. up to executives and creative heads. True. And, you know, whatever their goals might be with a game, but it just feels like games played a bit too safe, a bit too often. And it's the same thing with movies. Yeah, it's the same thing with movies. Like, I'm just, I, I like... I like superhero movies. I do. Um, you, you know, Marvel, Poggies, you know, like I think a lot of the Marvel movies are, are cool. Uh, but there's just so many of, of the same thing. It's the same thing. Like another one, another one, another one, another one. Like people are just getting tired. They're getting tired of it. I think That's so. That's why I do agree with this. And I just wish it would stop. I'm thankful for a game like Breath of the Wild, which was doing a good job of breaking the mold. It's boring it's still now, yeah. Because they're in too the Ubisoft safe. Formula. And now Elden Ring pushing as the antithesis to the standard open world format. Listen, I enjoy all these games. I'm going to list, but there is definitely a problem when they all feel so samey. Ghost of Tsushima, Assassin's Creed, Horizon, mm -hmm. Halo Infinite, Far Cry, etc. And yeah, I actually do concur there. Even Ghost of Tsushima, which was my game of the year in the year that the I game came out, one. could feel formulaic, but there are so many things that made up for that, like the combat just being amazing, the visuals, the, especially the way the foliage makes the world feel like it's breathing with how it's constantly swaying, the yeah. design of the world, and uh, I like the story personally, and there's so many good facets of that game that made up for the fact that it was somewhat formulaic, and I think there's so much potential for these franchises I to think kind so of expand too. their horizons when it comes to open Not world. every game has to completely break the mold and reinvent everything. Like, it's okay to make a game or do something that's, that's formulaic and just have it be really, really good. Like, you don't have to rein... Like, uh, World of Warcraft, in a lot of ways, did not really reinvent the wheel. It was just a really good wheel. Lost Ark, like Mario, yeah. Like, there were a lot, yeah. It, it's that Genshin Impact, yeah, Mario Kart, these games, yeah. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just make a really good game, and it can be formulaic, and people will love it. World design, and pave the road to something that evokes a bit more engagement from players instead of this sense of constantly being handheld and navigated. Alex finished off with, instead of always doubling down on what has the best mass market appeal and always doing exactly what the mass market expects, please start taking more risks. Indeed. When Demon Souls was first proposed and, you know, as the game was being made, yeah. everyone thought this game was going to flop, including yeah. Sony, the publisher. They did not like this game. They just wanted to get it out there and get it over with, but it ended up being a risk worth taking. It Absolutely. kickstarted a whole new subgenre, which I think peaks with Elden Ring with True. how the open world design has been so well integrated with that formula. And I just, I wish it would be more risks like that, but because publishers like to play it safe because they know safe well, that, because that's what they do right and like that's always the balance it's the balance between people that are creatively creatively driven and people that are trying to make sure that they get enough because the publishers aren't always wrong there's a lot of times where you know developers make content and it just sucks and it's like well we tried to take a risk it's like yeah well driving without a seatbelt is a risk D -d does that usually pay off no it doesn't there are plenty of things it's like well, we're going to do things differently with this game. Uh, we're going to have it to where, uh, you, you know, like, well, you, you have to, uh, your weapons break and you can't repair them. It's like, actually, there's a reason why every other game doesn't do this. And we'll find out why. Yeah, so, it, yeah, you do have some people that try to, like, reinvent the wheel. And they just turn out with a rock. It's like, well, this isn't a new wheel. This is just a rock. Please just give us a wheel again, please.
brings in money that's where creativity gets stifled that's where it feels like it takes too long for new boundaries to be pushed and new molds to be broken in we like the comfort food but at this moment the entire buffet is just one type of bread this is a great way to put it again it's okay to have more comfort food based more accessible open world with you know map markers and that are more navigated like horizon forbidden west or like assassin's yeah. Creed or ghost of Tsushima or all these other games but we just need a bit more variance because it's all been comfort food as far as open world design goes, and that's where I do agree yeah, here. I can see I'll that. leave this open it's for like more things corral. I have to say and just keep it in this thread. But yeah, it really does bug me. And I do like this developer's take because this yeah, is actually a more nuanced take compared to just a simple why does this game it's bad get so much it's praise good. from your yeah. viewers who don't seem to care about flaws. Uh, whereas this developer is looking at from like there are good things about all these games but can we just vary it up a little bit can we not just pretend like the assassin's creed formula the ubisoft open world formula is the only way to do it and ubisoft especially has been called out quite a bit after the ubisoft developer here called out elden ring mm -hmm. which is ironic coming from a developer working for a company whose you know ux and overall game design has become so stale so complacent to its design to the point where all of their games one thing i really like about games is i don't like having a ui in the game like i, I don't want to have a ui in the game like the more of the game that is not the ui the better it is like i'm talking like an example uh shadow of the colossus uh dark souls or something like that no hp bar well i i, I don't want to have no hp bar right of course i want to have indicators of what's going on in the game but like uh, i would like to see things move towards more like the more minimalistic ui does that make sense yeah i, I want to see things be more minimalistic yeah 25 add-ons yeah exactly like three different third-party websites yeah 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 don't you want your abilities uh it depends i feel like the, the best way to do a ui in my opinion is for certain things like that to be optional like i i think giving players options for the ui is the best option that you can possibly have like give them the tools to do it if they choose to do it but don't make it to where you can't turn it on or off there's one that well, a good game in my opinion is one that feels like a touch like work being challenging it's also really fun it's hard to find that balance yeah exactly feel kind of the same and so when it comes to the community the you game, will see menus, people yeah. talking about how if elden ring was a ubisoft game you would have paid real money in their store to get the stone sword key for Ooh. those who don't know what this is, this is an item that you have to find Ooh. there are a number of them scattered throughout the world you'll find them you know by opening up treasure chests by looting them from corpses well, here's what it would really be there are six items that you need the stone sword keys to unlock to finish the game and there are five stone sword keys in the game and you can buy more on the store and the stone sword keys that you can buy on the store are five dollars but you can only buy currency to buy them from the store in packages of 10 or 20 dollars that's what it would really be like feeding enemies you name it and you it would have, have a chance to fail. These yeah. open certain sort of secret dungeons or little secret areas where you find be six cool dollars, new rewards not five. like lootable chests that will yield new weapons and yeah, new yeah, rewards, yeah. new items, whatnot. Uh, these are important to sort of the side activities of the game. Now, while Jess here insists that these are jokes, and I doubt Ubisoft would actually charge money for something like the Stone Sword Key, but they do similar crap, I could not disagree with this take more. If Ubisoft had their hands on Elden Ring, they would absolutely allow you to earn the Stone Sword Keys in-game, but hey, we got this alternative where you can buy them in the store because these are yeah. time savers and they're optional, and we're just giving you the option to skip it's the just pay for convenience guys it's totally fine it's pay for convenience you, you i've said this before right whenever a game has pay for convenience you've just created a profit incentive to make the game inconvenient that's all there is to it it's it, oh look it's lost ark when have i ever defended lost ark and also number one lost ark it's a free game okay like i have a different fucking paradigm for free games lost ark is a pay to win game period i still play it because it's fun but it's a pay to win game compelling gameplay of exploration and of finding these and then like going through this cycle of wonder and discovery and unlocking yeah. these they're not really time savers they are solution to an intentionally introduced grind problem 
or they're basically a giant pay money to skip compelling content of the game button. And that's one area where Horizon Forbidden West and games like that stand above the Ubisoft games, even though they kind of follow the same formula. Horizon Forbidden West wasn't designed around microtransactions and around grindy content. It was paced just right. It, it's a game with integrity, whereas games a like Assassin's Creed seem to they like do it. shove in microtransactions that either yeah. allow you to skip compelling content of the game or that try to resolve the intentionally introduced grindy aspect of a game and yeah. it's various sort of grindy and monotonous activities and that's what True. makes Elden Ring all the more refreshing there's zero microtransactions yep. no aspect of the game yep. feels like it was influenced by monetization everything just feels so well thought out and organic and it just it's just a video for game. experience that feels that's it ideal like it was exactly what the developers envisioned like it was really made out of love and not out of greed and so that's why people are kind of going out of their way now that the ubisoft developer has suddenly like criticized elden ring in a way that feels cynical and not constructive this is why the community is putting stuff like this out and yeah. now this poses up to you know over twenty two thousand yeah. upvotes and this is kind of the conversation that's happening they've kind of now rallied against ubisoft and that's what can happen when one developer decides to in a way that feels salty, lambast another game's success. No when doubt, their own yeah. games. Uh, just this is the same thing that happens with Blizzard developers too. Is like all the time, and this happens with streamers and, and other people just in general. Is whenever they open their mouth and they start talking a bunch of shit, that's just the way it goes. I've fallen short in areas where Elden Ring really rises above and beyond. And here's the yeah. thing, even the community acknowledges that there are aspects of Elden Ring to criticize. When it comes to UX, for example, Absolutely. it was noted right here, PSA, you can sort the inventory for the love of God, make this top so others see it. And literally in my last video I was talking about how the game could use at least like a recent items tab or something because the inventory in Elden Ring that's quickly true. gets filled up and when you find a yeah, new that's item, a really good, that's you often a really good find idea. yourself having to look for it so you can either use it or read its description yeah. to see what it does. Uh, well, I've, it's it been hard for me to find items too. There is a feature where you can press the L1 button to sort the game by order of acquisition, but it is not listed in the help section. Yeah. So look, there are aspects of the US to criticize. The community even criticizes the UX and aspects of it in some way. But are these aspects all so detrimental that the game doesn't deserve the high praise it gets for where it does shine above exactly. and beyond so many other open world games? I don't think so. Does it deserve this tone of criticism, this level of, again, saltiness or no. pettiness or jealousy, no whatever you want to call it, where it feels like they're underplaying the game's success rather than just saying, here are some areas where I have issues with. I don't think this is the right approach. Mm -hmm. I hope that this kind of approach to communication isn't something that becomes commonplace. I do like Alex's take here, this former Ubisoft dev who is respectful but direct about his criticisms. Yeah, people are just tired of the formula. Uh, I think that's what it is for a lot of cases. Open world games yeah, absolutely. These days have become complacent and uh, a Ubisoft dev who has worked on games that are very formulaic, you know, just sort of talking trash is what it feels like here. It just is rather ironic. And also this is the same individual who also played a part in Battlefield 2042's UI and UX, and we all know all about that Ooh. game. The UN UX in that game has been criticized quite a bit as well. So Here's another example of a really bad UI that didn't matter. Do you remember back in PUBG where you had to drag your items over because it was faster than actually clicking to have them equipped into your inventory? Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the way the game used to play, and I don't know if it's still like that or not. I know some people still probably do drag out of habit, um, but uh, yeah, that didn't really matter, though. Like, nobody gave a shit because the game was good. Like, gameplay is king. Everything besides gameplay is secondary. If gameplay is bad, the game is bad. If gameplay is good, the game is good. It's literally that simple. It's just, you know, there's that level of irony as well on top of all of that. But at the end of the day... Look, let's just appreciate the fact that amazing games are coming out this yep. year. Like, 2022 is looking like an awesome year for games. And I think every one of those good games can be appreciated for their own reasons without us having to, like, pit them against each other. True. Because True. at the end of the day, True. the options are there, and it's your choice to buy the game that resonates with you. Elden Ring resonated with me. Horizon resonated with me enough that I still enjoyed it. I didn't even play if I that ultimately game. prefer Elden Ring, but I'm glad they both exist. Yeah, I'm I didn't play that game people are able to enjoy what they want to enjoy 
And that's really mm -hmm. what matters, I think. Yeah, with all said and done, this is one man's take and additional context on this Elden Ring this video. discourse. And, I'm going to watch like maybe uh, two more videos the, and then I, uh, I just want to start playing the game. Negative discussion like, that's been going on as a result of... I was telling uh, too many stories today. Just uh, being a little mean-spirited about sure. the way they criticize the game. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below what yeah, your thoughts and opinions are up. on this whole discourse. And have you played Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West? Yeah, quit, quit being salty about shit. That's all there is. Too much goofing, man? Three hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know.